Hopefully you've seen the video where I talked about the waves that wave interact with the shoreline and we talked about in that video how when the waves hit the bottom they actually slow down and they, they also become to shallower water and are forced to collapse under their own weight and when we put it all together that creates the breakage action of waves as they approach the shoreline. We also talked about the fact that the way, as the waves interact with the bottom they slow down and are forced to be fracked usually towards the beach in a, in a way that a lot of beaches especially those that have um, not too they're not too steep uh, by the time the wave hits the beach it's actually moving in a parallel direction to the beach also because of the uh, land breeze or sorry the ocean breeze which orients uh, the wave in a new fetch as it approaches the beach in addition to the fact that it's also refracting as it hits the bottom and slows down and then um, we also talked about the way that the fact that the, as the waves interact with obstacles like um, like islands or like headlands or things like that, they are actually going to create different kinds of refraction patterns which reorient the wave motion. You might even destroy waves or construct more waves and all sorts of things like that. So in this video, we're actually going to be focusing on how certain currents they are associated with these waves. So the wave motions uh, or the breakers that as they reach the beach actually create several currents, including the rip current, the undertow, the longshore current, and the breaker current. Now you see all, all of these things feature here in these slides, but let's talk about each one of them. The top of the water receives more energy than the bottom of the water does from the wind and because the bottom is actually slowing down because of contact with the bottom, that means that the top of the water is going to move more than the bottom of the water will move and you're going to get this ever extending or current towards the front. Now remember the wave particles in the wave itself do not move theoretically in a forward direction. But they're kind of rock back and forth and up and down at the same time and really what the molecules are doing is going in circles and that these circles get smaller and smaller as they go deeper and deeper. But since you have less energy in the bottom and then at the top, technically the front the molecules are moving, sometimes move forward more, slightly more than, they, than the bottom ones do. And you get a differential between the way the water on the top and the way the bottom, bottom moves. This Basically the idea is the same wind that creates the, the waves and inevitably creates the current, a current as well. And that's what we call the breaker current. And as this current approaches the beach and you have the top of the water moving faster than the bottom of the water, you have um, an actual flow of water heading towards the beach. Now the stronger this breaker current is, the stronger you get, you're going to get something uh, of a backwash as the, as the waves re are forced to return from this. All the water that's hitting the beach is not going anywhere and so it has to return somehow. And there are several ways for the water returns and one of them is actually called the undertow. Now I'm sure that if you've ever been to the beach you realize what the undertow feels like. Basically you see even as the waves approach the beach that they're kind of trying to resist coming towards the beach. It's almost like, like they want to go but they also want to come back all at the same time. And that has again to do with the fact that the water molecules are moving in circles, not really forward. And what you're seeing propagating towards you is not the, way, not the particles of water itself, but the wave motion. The water particles are actually pretty much staying in the same spot, uh, save a fi minor fluctuations that are going forward because of the breaker current. But what's moving towards you is not really the water. So it's actually a very important concept. When you see the wall of wave of water coming towards you, there is no water that's moving towards you, it's the wave that's moving through the water towards you. However, there is of course, that's the point of this video, a small amount of current where some water molecules do actually indeed move towards you in a current. But at the same time, these molecules have to go back somehow and so that's what creates the undertow. And if you ever stepped on the ocean, you actually experience the fact that the bottom of your feet seem to be going forward uh, towards, towards the water and as the waves approach you can actually see them kind of rolling backwards especially when they're at the beach itself you can see this motion where the waves kind of roll backwards even as they're moving forwards kind of resisting this change and that is what we call the undertow now the undertow is typically a weak current and it's associated with um, it's sometimes confused with the rip current and so people think that the rip current is something that rips you down and pulls you down under the, under the water and it drowns you. That's not why, not why you drown with the rip current. But the undertow is actually important for rip currents because this returning water sometimes carves into the sand because it's returning deep into the sand and it finds areas of the beach where the, the sand is more, more sensitive and it creates a greater erosion pattern in that area than others. And so what you end up getting is this big gushes in the sand. Imagine this way. Let's say for example as the breaker current is coming in and creating this pattern of flow and you're gonna have, I'm gonna put it in yellow, a returning backwash 
in the bottom, what if the backwash finds least, less resistance in the middle here? So what's going to happen is that as if you, after a while, if you look at the sand line, and I'm going to draw the sand line in red here, let's say you have a bunch of sand, and this usually looked like that, well, that, that longshore current is going to be pushing that sand backwards, and since this it found an area of least resistance, it's actually going to create a gush into the sand, and it's going to create what we call a sand, a sand bank, on both sides of the gush and in the meanwhile it's going to create a canal in between that and so now you created a, a, an area where water can flow through even faster through an undertow and that is what's in a rip current so let's talk about rip currents rip currents are basically returning water just like the undertow that takes advantage of the canals that the undertow digs so you can see here in the top right corner what I was talking about before you can see a sandbar and another sandbar and then in between them you have this outcropping that the water of the undertow carved by finding an easy area and now this sandbar is going to be used by a current that's going to float out towards the sea to return the water of the breaker currents and so you're going to have uh, breaker currents blowing towards the beach and being forced to return. Now, some of it will still return through under tolls, but some will return right at the surface, taking advantage of the canal that was dug through the returning under toll waters. And so that's, that's where you get this, these outcroppings of currents going into the ocean. Now, if you get trapped in one of these fast-moving water flows, the problem with the rip currents is that they will toss, toss you really far away. So basically, you will, what you will get is that this current will pick you up and throw you uh, from the feeder through the neck into the head. And by the time you're in the head, you're in open water, really deep, where you cannot swim. And that's why people drown, drown because of this, because they find themselves um, too far from the land, overwhelmed by the current. And usually, uh, the reaction that most people have is to try to swim towards the beach to escape and get back. But if you do that, you're never going to be able to swim faster than that current, and that's why a lot of people drown. They run out of energy and they drown. The easiest way to escape a recurrent is what they actually say here in this drawing. You should actually simply swim sideways, so you get out of the neck and the head and actually escape the rip current. Because remember that the rip current is flowing because of returns from the feeder or the breakers using the sandbars underneath the water. So these outcroppings of water, which we call the rip currents, will occur every time that you have the sandbars carved by the other toe. Now, you will get things like this more often whenever you have something called onshore winds. Now, onshore winds, or even when the waves actually hit the beach dead on because they actually completed a whole refraction or reorientation, that means these waves are coming straight at the beach. What you get there is so much interaction between the waves, or the waves are hitting each other, uh, or the cusps of the waves are hitting each other so well, so well that you're causing unpredictable reactions between the waves. It has everything to do with that reflection pattern that we, that we talked about. As the waves approach the beach, they actually both refract and reflect. And so if they're approaching the beach dead on, they reflect back to themselves pretty much. If you approach at an angle, you're actually going to create a, refra a reflection to the side, so you're not going to end up hitting the, the wave itself. But if you were to approach, say, dead on, that reflection pattern will also return to the wave dead on, which creates both constructive and destructive waves and irregular wave patterns. And so the consequence of these irregular wave patterns and wave interactions, and you have these waves flowing in opposite directions of each other, so you have a divergent zone of in irregular cusps, which are very sparse in between, and whenever you have one of these divergent zones, you're going to have a very strong undertow uh, happening underneath here, which will carve that hole, which will later on be used by the rip current to, to uh, flow water back into the thing. So whenever you have onshore winds, you're going to get more rip currents. On the other hand, just like I mentioned on, on this slide, if, you, if, you're getting, if you're hitting the wave sideways and you have what is called a, a longshore wind, or it's, we're talking about a, a steep beach, we didn't really have time for reorienting, it could make completely something that's completely uh, flattened as it hits the beach. It's still going to refract towards the beach, but maybe not completely towards the beach. Then you're going to actually get regular cusps and regular deep eddies, and then you're going to see basically an uh, ever-changing pattern of return or rocking sideways motion. So what, what you think of it is that these waves are rocking both uh, vertically around and also um, horizontally around as you're looking for the top. But at least this time, you're not going to get 
so much of a long sh uh, of a rip current. Instead, you get something called a longshore current, where this wind is actually bouncing off the beach and causing the motion of the water to move parallel to the beach because the waves are approaching the beach at an angle. So whenever you get something like this, where the waves actually approach the beach at an angle, and they, yes, they do orient themselves somewhat, but not necessarily too much, you're still going to have the undertow and the backflow happening underneath those waves, but what's going to happen is that you're going to create an overall pattern of zigzagging on the water molecule, on the wa of the water molecules, because of the of the ever spanning pattern that we saw on the pre on previous slide. And so what ends up happening is that the, the, the what it feels like by the combination of both moving sideways and the backwash is that the water is actually going taking a step to the side and then it's taking a step back, taking a step to the side, taking a step back. And then the same thing is going to happen in the sand as the water hits it, and the actual path of the sand will therefore look something like this. And you're going to have these regular cusps, where in the sand is basically being dragged to the side by these longshore currents. And so you're going to have an overall pattern of motion of water parallel to the beach anytime that you have incoming water in a direction that's not exactly dead on in the beach. Now, notice that this, this wave pattern, this current pattern is going to be weaker behind the breakers or above the breakers, but stronger right in between the breaker lines. So that we're talking about the middle of the breaker line is where you're going to have the strongest longshore currents. And I'm sure you experienced this if you've ever been to the beach as well, because if you're in the beach and you've ever seen like, you know, oh, your family's right in front of you, and then uh, two seconds later, you're, you're like in the middle of the breakers, you're having fun, and then you notice you're to the side, and then your family's, yeah, right on the side, and a few minutes later, you're to the side again, and then later you're, Hey, before you know it, your friend, your family's all the way to the side, and you have to walk backwards to get back to position. And so that is being caused by the longshore current. But also because of the longshore current, it's picking up sand as it does this, as the zigzagging is happening, and it, it's actually creating a surf zone that's dragging the sand. You get it, it's called a longshore drift, or the movement of sand in a zigzagging motion that actually ends up creating these sandbars along the beach and also you're going to get the deposition of this sand somewhere down the road somewhere down the road from the actual beach you might get a gathering of sand that's being picked up from here and thrown on the other side so remember this will happen every time you have some uh, um, a longshore winds or uh, wave patterns that do not completely reflect refract to hit the beach that on um, so we talked about uh, rip currents uh, long Longshore currents are the undertow and the breaker current as currents generated by wave motion. And remember that they are all kind of related to each other, but they're very important, especially if you want to go to the beach someday and you're being pulled to, to backwards by a strong current. You know you're standing right on top of a sandbar and you should swim sideways to escape the sandbar that the undertow carved because of strong breaker currents creating a strong undertow that cut through an area of weak sand. And every time you feel that you're being pulled to the side, you know you're in a longshore current, probably because the waves are hitting at an angle to the beach, and so you know that's going to be a stronger longshore current. So you got to watch out for that. And you also know to escape the rip current, you're supposed to swim sideways, and you know what all these currents are all about. Now, in the next video, we're going to put together how the longshore current helps create the beach, all right, or beach patterns. I'll see you guys then.